Okay, 4-H'ers, now we're going to cover an order of insects that you're familiar with from last contest and last year, but they've included another group of insects into this order that is going to make it seem a little weird for you. So we're going to cover the order Blatodia or Blatidia. These are have always been the cockroaches, but taxonomists decided that termites are now part of this category also. So we know that cockroaches and termites are both considered a pest. Um, their host would be house. They're found indoors, right? Or, and then of course, termites specifically are found eating wood. There are um, a few cockroaches that you're going to have to know. The American cockroach needs to be known by um, everybody, including juniors. These are uh, the largest cockroaches that we have in North America. Um, one thing about a cockroach and how you know it's a cockroach and not another insect is that they have this thing called a pronotum. So over the, their head, um, they never are able to really look up. They're always facing down and part of their thorax extends past their head, which keeps them from being able to look up. So if they have that, like where you can't really see the head very much and they have that kind of hood over their back, then you know it's got to be a cockroach. Um... The thing about American cockroaches that sets them apart from the other ones is that in addition to their size, they kind of have a lighter ring around that pronotum. Um, what I would know about them is that they live outdoors, but they come indoors and you find them with sewer systems and um, decaying trees and wood piles. And um, like in Florida, these guys are a big problem inside the uh, palm trees where the, the bark kind of overlaps. The adults of these can fly. As with all Blatodia, they have chewing mouth parts and they have the incomplete metamorphosis or they are hemimetabolous. Because they live on land, you would call their immatures nymphs. German cockroaches um, need to be known by intermediates and seniors. So in this, in this group of Blatodia juniors, all you have to know is American cockroach. So if you see a cockroach, it's an American cockroach on the junior. Uh, competition. For intermediates and seniors, you guys also need to know the German cockroach. Now, when you're identifying this one from the other one, it's so much smaller than the American cockroach. It's very, very small. Um, it cannot fly. They're not able to fly, even though they do have wings. On their pronotum, instead of it being kind of ringed in a lighter red, they have two black stripes on the back. And so that's how you know it's those guys. These guys are pretty well associated with buildings. Um, they're a major, major pest. People have allergies to them, especially kids in like um, uh, apartment complexes and things like that. Um, they're only found inside, really. And so if you find them inside, it means that you brought them inside. Your neighbor had them. Someone who lived there before had them, that kind of thing. And you can see from the image, they're smaller than a penny. So these are really, really tiny. They're found in what they call colonies, but it's not a true colony. You find them in huge numbers living all together underneath the sink or something. Now this gear for the competition, we have removed um, one cockroach and replaced it with one that's a lot more common for us throughout Texas. So we've, we've taken out the Oriental cockroach and we've added a different one called the smoky brown cockroach. Smoky brown cockroaches look real similar to American cockroaches, but they're completely, completely brown. They're almost the same size as American cockroaches also, but you're not going to see that ring around the, the pronotum. It's going to be completely dark, dark brown, almost red, um, almost black all over the body. These guys are found in areas with super duper high humidity. So inside, they're usually in fireplaces or attics. And outside, they're never going to be in the sun. They're going to be in shaded spots that have a lot of mulch or leaf litter, places where the humidity is pretty high. Here's a picture of the three of those cockroaches compared to one another. So the German cockroach is significantly smaller than the other guys. The American is the biggest, but you're not going to be able to tell that so much maybe with um, just looking at a picture of it. So I would look at, do you have that lighter color ring around it or is it a solid, solid, dark, glossy, shiny, um, almost greasy looking uh, pronotum? The solid one is going to be a smoky brown. Americans have that little kind of two-tone to it. The last guy that you need to know 
in the Blatodia group, and this is for intermediates only, because remember, juniors only had to know the uh, American cockroach. Intermediates and seniors have to know everything else um, are going to be termites. So they're no longer in the order Isoptera. They're now in Blatodia with the rest of the cockroaches. And, you know, termites are just tiny, tiny little bugs that have um, nearly no eyes that you can really see, kind of blind little things. They're subterranean living under the ground usually. I would know that they have something called a caste system, which means that everyone has a job um, and they do their job. So there's kind of a hierarchy. There's kings and queens. There's reproductives. There's workers. There's soldiers. And everyone has different jobs. Reproductives are the only ones that can fly. They'll fly. They'll drop down um, to the ground. They'll drop their wings. The females will start laying eggs. The males generally die after that. But they, the only reason why they have wings is so they can fly up in the air and do a, what they call a nuptial flight, like a, a mating flight. These guys are considered pests. They're structural pests, but they're also recyclers in the environment. So it has been often seen on a contest where you're asked, why, how could this be um, a beneficial insect? And you have to decide how that could be. Um, pretty much every insect you could argue has a way that it could be beneficial also, right? And in the case of termites, they get rid of dead stumps in the ground, trees that fall down, roots and other things to make room for new plants to grow. So here's an image of the of three different cat, actually four different casts <clears throat> of termites. You have your reproductives on the right hand side that have the wings on them, look kind of a, quite a bit different from the workers. Um, on the bottom is the is a queen that's mated. She's all extended on her abdomen because she's full of eggs. And then in both the um, reproductives picture and this picture on the top, you can see workers. Workers have round heads, real soft kind of round heads, and that makes up the majority of what you see in both of the pictures. Whereas soldiers have real strong mandibles, and you can see on the right hand side it has a very rectangular shaped head. Um, on the left hand side, it looks like those kind of more, have more of an oval shaped head. So the soldiers are who protect. They can't actually eat because those mandibles are too big. They can't chew on the wood. Instead, the workers eat and regurgitate the food and feed everybody. And for seniors, that term is called trophallaxis, where they feed one another. And that would be um, an important term to learn. So those are the insects in the group Blatodia. You've got American cockroaches for our juniors, and our intermediates and seniors need to know American cockroaches, German cockroaches, smoky browns, and termites.